I don't know if anybody's familiar with worship songs or not, but there's an artist called Todd Agnew who does a song. And if you have a chance on the internet at home, type in My Jesus by Todd Agnew and watch that song. And it shows scenes from the Passion of the Christ. And the more I watched that, the more I thought, people don't really realize who Jesus really is. I mean, they see him as um, um, the Christmas, the babe in the manger, um, maybe the 12-year-old speaking in the temple uh, when his parents left him behind for a day and a half for two days and had to go back and get him. Um, is he the angry Jesus who overturned the tables in the temple? Um, or he's a teacher preaching and speaking to anyone who would listen to him. They say curly hair and a light complexion, but most likely Jesus had olive skin and dark straight hair, being of Jewish descent. I would assume that most of us here, like me, grew up with a picture of Jesus somewhere in their house. In the book Killing Jesus, Bill O'Reilly and historian Martin Duggar detail the events leading up to the execution of the most influential man that ever lived, Jesus of Nazareth. I would strongly recommend this book, and we need to remember that Jesus is 100% man, and he's also 100% God. He felt pain, suffering, and sorrow, just like any human being, and maybe more, because he's he had the suffering and the pain of all of us, born and unborn and already dead, on his shoulders most of his adult life. 2,000 years after this beloved and controversial young revolutionary was brutally killed by Roman soldiers, more than 2.2 billion people attempt to follow his teaching and believe that he is God. King Herod thought Jesus was a threat. So much so that he wanted to have all the children, two years and under, killed to silence this king of kings, lord of lords. For centuries, prophets had predicted the coming of a new king to rule their people. Jesus was a baby, and the king was afraid of him to the point of having boys under two killed. At 12 years old, he listened to Jewish scholars, scribes, and Pharisees and shared insights about their common faith. Jesus' understanding of complex spiritual concepts astonished the preach, priest and the teachers. But he had to be cautious when he talked to the crowd because as a full-fledged member of the Jewish religious community from the age of 13, he knew he was accountable for his behavior and that blasphemous talk about being the son of God would lead to his public execution. The Jews could stone him for such language, and the Romans would kill him for even suggesting that. That he is the divine emperor's equal. Stoning would seem a tame way to die in comparison with the evils of which the Romans are capable of. Evils Jesus had seen with his own eyes. We all know about Jesus' walk with the disciples, his teaching, preaching, and baptism. But my Jesus, my Jesus is the one that died for me. My Jesus spent his time with thieves and liars. <coughs> Makes me want to cry. <coughs> he loved poor people. He accosted the arrogant. He disliked arrogant people. But most of all, my Jesus bled and died for me and you. Isaiah 53, 5 says, But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was on him. And by his stripes, by his stripes, we are healed. When I think of Jesus, I think of the man who bled and died for me. He sweated blood while praying in the garden. And the sweating of blood is a real thing. It's called hematosaurus. It happens when you're under extreme stress. It's 
been proven, medically proven. So he shed blood while he sweated in the garden praying. He shed blood at the whipping post. I used to think a scourging wasn't that bad. You see pictures of somebody with a whip smacking somebody and you're like, eh, I can take that. But when I got to looking and going back and realizing that two grown men, probably two of the biggest men in the Roman army, took turns one after the other, smacking him with a cat of nine tails, probably sharpened bone with a hook on the end of it. And each time they hit him in the back and pulled that thing back, it ripped flesh out of his skin. The time they were done, it showed his inner organs. People said Jesus was weak for dying on the cross. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't have stood the whipping. Most of us here probably wouldn't have stood the, the beating that he took at the hands of those men. And they only stopped when they were worn out, too tired to continue beating him. And after all that, he carried his own cross. Jesus bled internally from the severe beating. He shed blood when they put the crown of thorns on his head. Not these little thorns you prick yourself when you're picking blueberries. These were two, three inch long thorns from bushes. They wove them into a crown. They just didn't set them on his head. They forced it, pushed them down on his head. The blood ran in his eyes. He shed blood when they pierced his hand to nail him on a cross. He shed blood when they pierced his feet. Blood and water came forth when they pierced his side. And they say that water comes from, uh, when you have a heart, a broken heart, you, the sack around your heart fills with water. And, and a lot of people think that's what, what the water was when the water rushed out of his side when he pierced it. John 19, 34 says, but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a lance, and instantly there came out blood and water. Some say Jesus literally died from a broken heart. Please remember this when you think about Jesus and what he had already done, what he's already done, and what he will do for you. And remember the last thing Jesus said on the cross, it is finished or paid in full. He was declaring the debt owed to his father was wiped away completely and forever. You realize that's not Jesus' debt, but ours. Now man could be restored back to God. What great freedom has been purchased for us? And that only through the blood of Jesus, the blood shed on the cross will never lose its power. Think about Jesus and where he is right now on the right hand of the Father. How glorious do you imagine him to be? And remember, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I would just ask it if you're here today and not saved, don't leave this church today without speaking to me I'm one of the elders here at the church. It's my hope that each time I can speak that somebody will be convicted to either turn their life over to Jesus, to rededicate their life to Jesus, to do more for Jesus. We always say we don't have time, but there's always time. There's always time until, until we pass away. And I, for one, don't think that the Lord's coming is going to be that far off. I may not live to see it, and some of us here may not live to see it, but I think some of the younger people probably will. And either way, if he comes before I die or after I die, I know where I'm going, and I want all of you to know where you're going, too.